Kia ora, good evening. You're here with Boys Get Paid on another Thursday night. We're coming at you live from the Export Beer Garden Studio, and it's a Group 1 weekend, the Tab Classic, formerly known as the Captain Cook. How good. Group 1 racing back at Trentham. Summer is on. The sun is shining somewhat. But it's good to have you all here with us. Thank you very much. Luke, how are you, mate? I am like a spark telephone booth, mate. I am fucking dialed in. Oh, yeah. Fuck, you pumped up, Dan. You good? Me, I've been absolutely fucking battling with my bets. <laughs> But I am, I'm ready to win. Good. That's what we want to hear. Hopefully we can find some winners for the community out there tonight. It's good to have you all with us as always. Thank you very much for being a part of it. As always, we want to know what your best bet is for the weekend. We've got the Tab Classic. We've got the Wakefield Challenge Stakes. We've got the Bone Crusher Stakes up at Pukekohe. Some great racing. We've had New Plymouth today. I think we've got Rotorua on Sunday as well. So there's plenty of racing to throw your best bets at us about. Uh, and also, hopefully you've got your Kalaka Millions tickets because they are on sale. Let's start there, Luke. This week has been massive for Ellerslie Racecourse and massive for Boys Get Paid. Well, it has. Look, they had some more horses galloping and uh, jump outs and all sorts by the sounds there on Monday. And they were brave enough then to say, right, Wednesday, midday, they were going to start the sale of the tickets. So I was hoping for a little bit of an update as to how they're going Overall, and we might get that throughout the pod if we are lucky enough, but I think some of their areas are already sold out. Now, we were at about 360 tickets the last I heard, and that was yesterday, maybe even this morning. So I'd say we're probably at about 400 now, near on halfway to the limit of our room. So if you haven't got your ticket yet, get in the mix. Two things. One, we'd love to have you there and be a part of what will be a very historic event with the return to the Big E. But secondly, we don't want to run the risk that people find the BGP ticket and see, shit, this is outstanding value at 150 bucks, inclusive of GST, and you're getting four beers, a meal, there's bet slip vouchers, there's other shit to come, trust me on that one, and go, well, fuck, that's a pretty good deal. Why don't we just go to that room? And then we end up with people that don't really like racing or BGP community members and fans miss out because they didn't get a ticket quick enough. So be mindful of that. Get your ticket. But well done to Ellerslie. I think there's going to be such a big vibe around this race meet, and I cannot wait. Absolutely. That's a really good point. Really important around being inclusive of GST. That is the, that's the most <laughs> crucial point of that whole thing. Well, especially for those business owners out there, I'm sure you'll be um, buying some for some staff training. That's right. And resilience building, watching the Punters Club and a bit of entertainment, perhaps. That's right. And for all those people, we were just talking at the pub before as well. You've got your New Year's, you've got your Christmas in mind. But when you come back from your New Year's holiday, you go, shit, I don't want to stop. And this is on January 27th? 27th. 27th, which is absolutely perfect. So you might as well get your tickets in. We really, really want to see all you guys there. We can get them from Ellerslie uh, website. Is that right? You can. Avoid, avoid the co- uh, the come down by coming down to ATR, Auckland Thoroughbred Racing, on the 27th of January. Hoping for a pre-event as well, but got to work on that in the background. But, yep, tickets on their website. Go to the BGP app, and you'll find a link there. If you can't find it, just message somebody or surely. Uh, surely you can find it because 400 other people have. But, yeah, grab the uh, grab the link there and grab your ticket. Absolutely. Dan, are you in? Is your mate with the mullet uh, in? Joe, just on the podcast? Yeah, well, on yeah, 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 yeah. So I, I, well, I sent it to everyone. Like, I sent it to everyone at work, um, all my mates, and only about 50% of them got tickets at the early bird price. But they they were sold out. Like, within less than 24 hours, they were just gone. Mm. It was crazy. We did 200 uh, and yeah. um, overnight. Yeah, and then the ones that, that didn't get in there were complaining to me, and I said, fucking pull your head in. Yeah. Go buy a fucking ticket before you miss out. Absolutely. It is outstanding value. It's so good. Watching the uh, weigh-in <laughs> on Monday um, and seeing you know the horses actually properly galloping at Ellerslie and then hearing the announcement that it's all happening, and then Luke puts the tickets live. Oh. It is just so good. And we've got a theme song, but even more importantly, Luke, you've got some connections into the sound engineer for the entire Auckland Racing Club event? Yes. So I haven't told Ellerslie this yet. No one knows. <laughs> you weren't supposed to tell anyone, but we've hijacked it. So we've found the people that do the audio for the entire race day. <laughs> so we'll be DJing the bitch. Might as well get them prepped. <laughs> we'll be figuring out what we want. We're talking replays from yesteryear. We're talking cut that person off over there, get this song on. In full control. We've got the decks. And it ain't pay money. No, maybe he'll be there. 50 Cent. Adam, you're away next week at 50 Cent. We asked for Fat Boy Slim last year. He couldn't make it. It's a shame, but hey, look, he missed out his loss. Why not? So we've got Sweet Caroline into Bliss, isn't mm-hmm. it? That's what we're going for. Yep. 
think that's going to be the sing-along for the day. So make sure you get your heads around that. Bliss by the dudes, sweet Caroline, everyone knows that. Be like a boxing event. Yeah, Rack Rack City once Dan Rack uh, has six beers. <laughs> <laughs> they can fire me up after the fifth. <laughs> Absolutely. And it wouldn't be a Karaka Millions without Ted being there as well. And Ted is going to have a bloody horse in the Karaka Millions as well, a two-year-old. He had missed Ella, didn't he, at one he point, which was a three-year-old, I believe, at that point in time, or was it two? Uh, three-year-old in the Karaka Million three-year-old. We had it to run top four to win a million dollars at run sixth. That's close. That's very close. That's it won its next start by about three lengths, I think. Um, but anyway... So the punters club loading up your um, your single uh, individual one bets on Maracatu <laughs> or what? <laughs> <laughs> we we'll have to we'll have to find out. Luke's been given some grief today that your punters club sucks because you only do individual bets. Yeah, sorry, mate. Terry fucking toe tapper himself. You know that's <laughs> run so many of his own punters clubs. Yeah. Classic. Yeah. Hopefully he doesn't put his sorry, three dollars we'll, in. We'll do a couple of ten thousand dollar. Quinellas or trifectas, do we? Yeah. yeah. Just give right. everyone's okay. money away. I mean, <laughs> it wasn't a million dollars on a multi, but anyway, he must have missed that one. Uh, good on you. Good on you. We absolutely love it. But it is great news. Congratulations, Ted. He's got a horse in. Maracatu yeah. on Saturday was really good. It was huge. It was very, very good. And yeah, they were very confident going into it. The money came for the horse. You made it your best bet. Well done. And it had to, you know, it had to fight and it had to earn that victory. And it did. And it's found its way into the Karaka Million. So what a feeling that would be. I'm already dreaming of it, and I don't even have a runner in the million. So I can only imagine what it's like for the connections of those horses that are already going to be racing for a million dollars or even 1.5 million on the 27th of January. Will Ted be in the BGP room or down in the owner's lounge? He'll be with us, won't you, Ted? Yeah, come hey? on, Ted. Hey? Yeah, surely. Don't think you can get out of that, mate. You'll be there. Uh, Dan, did Maricardo's run change anything for you, Karaka Millions-wise, two-year-old on the weekend? No. Yeah. Um, I, like it looked really good and it looked like it fought on well, but I, I've still got that ingrained in my brain. That win from um, Velocious was something special. Mm, so Velocious. that that for me is the bench benchmark, and we'll just yeah we'll always have to wait and see and see if something else can do something better than that. Does Tiako have anything more to come? Yeah, I'm pretty sure they've got two running this weekend, um, and there's probably yeah. Plenty more water to go under the bridge, I would say. Absolutely. And I was they, actually thinking, sorry, mate, I was thinking about asking the tab, would they guarantee us a futures bet? You know, say we lumped 20K on something in the futures at 18s, and if it doesn't run, we get the money back. Gee, that would give it a bit of hype, wouldn't it? So we're on now. We're on early, say. Yeah. And then it, it comes out, wins this weekend, or qualifies for the Karaka Million. Would that get you guys excited? A hundred percent, especially if you get the money back. Yeah. There's going to be $2 million <laughs> in the pool, so, you know, 20 you've got grand, isn't that a lot? Yeah. Fuck it, right. I'll Horny. You're already excited. Yeah. Horny. Yeah, yeah absolutely. <laughs> uh, Cam Rogers, yeah. hey, I don't know if you're watching, probably not, but if you're at home having a cup of tea, thinking about what to do and how to promote this, uh, this KM. Take us on. Fucking let us have a go. Good idea. I like it. Get in the futures. Why not? Um, Ted, just sticking on Ted news, honestly, today he tipped f- f- the first five of six of New Plymouth, including his best bets, best bets and he got a ho- one home at Geelong as well. Like Geelong today as well? Yeah, Geelong. Uh, oh. L- L-O-U. He put it on the Facebook page today. Hopefully people got some of that. Hopefully people got on the app this morning and got his tips because he's just done it again. Wow. Well, what does it say in the description? Something about uh, Ted sorting us out for Christmas. So, yes. My word. Geez, he goes good. He's really dialed in at the moment, isn't he? he he's like a bloody spark phone booth. <laughs> yes, he is. And uh, and Luke, he's got a. Oh, if somebody's got his message up, I don't know, but um, he wants to welcome Ulrika Holmquist. Yes, uh, mm-hmm. back, back in the country. Back to the Christmas. Back to the jockey ranks for New Zealand. Outstanding. Apparently, you'll be watching Ulrika. So great to have you here with us. Oh, it's pretty to see. You know, it'll be pretty to watch as well. And just so good to have another high caliber jockey. Knocking around New Zealand. So, yeah, good luck to her over the summer months. And I look forward to her coming to the Karaka Million, hopefully, surely. Definitely, eh? Kicking off in Rotorua this week. Going to be based at Cambridge. Um, bringing that Swedish form in, Ted reckons. We all have a bit of Swedish form, don't we, lads? Surely. Special, special guest in the room, maybe. Have yeah. a bit of a speech. Yeah, absolutely. Jumping on the stream. Ted, you're managing. Sort it out. Go on, Ted. Sort it out, Go mate. For what can't you do? Good on you, Ulrika. We'll, uh, we'll look forward to seeing you here in New Zealand over the coming weeks and months. Um, how'd you guys go on the weekend, Luke? Punting-wise? Up and down. What's funny? <laughs> <laughs> 
Yeah. We, got the, we had the same weekend. Yeah. <laughs> Started off with a hiss and a roar mm. and just probably went a bit early, you know. <laughs> Not sure if you guys can relate, but got a bit cocky early on and got a bit of Cooper at 480. Drifted out to five points something. Gee, it was a good, it was a good tidy win. That's what we wanted to see when we blessed it in that very first week there. But hopefully, well, it looks like a lot of people followed their money because there were a lot of uh, comments on the Facebook post. And yeah, we just sort of having a few lazy throws at the stumps, and then some of the things that I liked later in the day weren't winning. I was multiing Snazzy Tevi into a gearer, so I'm halfway there, and then getting roll bold and hold. So <laughs> just one of those days, lads. Uh, could, are you dropping a gearer? Yeah, I'm done with that thing. There must be something wrong with that. No, yes, it was tough. That was tough. Oh, I really felt it was real tough Saturday one. afternoon, <laughs> Lucas. Just... I waited all day. <laughs> I, I was pretty much exactly the same. Like I. Man, my, my shoulders were broad after, like, race three, race four. I thought, I'm unstoppable. Like, I just can't stop fucking banking winners. And then, yeah, then I just blew my chips in the, like, the, the afternoon I was oh. done. Yeah, I started going race to race in Whanganui or wherever the fuck they were. Just, yeah, why not? I'll pick one off down here as well. And, yeah. <laughs> no, they picked me off. Yeah, that was the uh, the story of the Saturday, unfortunately. Hopefully everybody out there, mate, has got some uh, winnings on Saturday. <laughs> Keep your comments coming in, please. Let us know if you're going to be at the Karaka Millions. Let us know if you're happy with Bliss. Um, and also let us know what your best bets are for the weekend. Again, it's a Group 1 weekend at Trentham, which is very, very exciting. We'll get to that very shortly. Uh, Dan, you must have won uh, some money on Alvinci Door um, on Saturday in the Eagle Technology Stakes. That was a oh, wow, that was a good win. Yeah, that was one of the few wins that I did have. And the writing was on the wall, eh? Like, it's been going such great races. Yeah. Um, and it just put them away, and it put them away really nicely. Um, so, yeah, I was really happy to to watch that come in. Pretty fur. Back. And even Mally Stone as well running up the inside. Mm. I thought, hang on, what's going on here? Yeah, yeah, good to see the old printout PDF doing bloody well. That was a hell of a run. Is PDF running in the, um, in the Tab Classic this week to defend its crown? I see it was... Yeah, it's in, but jockey yet? Got a jockey? Uh, he... Maddie Cameron on board. Is he? Maddie Vitamin C. Oh, gee whiz. You'd be nervous to tip Oh, no, sorry. That's Brando. Yeah, no oh, no yeah. jockey engaged for uh, the, the PDF, the printout. Okay. Hopefully it makes it there. Um, Eight's out to $9. That's a good sign. Why it, not be going? Good to see Whitehack back on the weekend as well. That was a big win, wasn't it? Bloody Especially impressive. first up. And did it easy. Did yeah. it easy. Uh, $1. ninety late, I think, as well. So Punter's got plenty of that. Yeah. Heading to the Dunstan Feeds uh, 1,500 metre on New Year's Day. I tried to look for some futures. There's nothing there. But, geez, I would have thought that that horse should be odds on for that race. Mm. I, I don't know what other kind of horses are going there. Maybe Habana's going there, mate. But I don't know. <laughs> you stay away from White Deck. Jeez. I don't know. Uh, unfortunately, Grail Seeker couldn't get the job done for Ted. That was a bit. Um, that was a bit of an interesting one. But then I looked at Justice Sharp's form, who won the race. It was pretty good form. Yeah, that was a very big win. That and it was a great ride as well. And I think it's Bailey Rogerson just crushed it. Very, very good right on the line there. Pumped with it as well. Yeah, I think a lot of punters got beat up on that. Was that three point two into a dollar eighty late? Shit, <laughs> a brick. That on, hurts. On Grail Seeker. Yeah. yeah. It, it looked like the horse to beat, didn't it? But, uh, yeah, unfortunately, you just never bloody know. Um, Sunday, did you get – I'd heard of this horse, Nasak Diamond, winning the Jericho. Oh. Congratulations, Sean Ritchie and everybody involved in that as well. It's amazing. 4,600 metres. It's a bloody long way to run. And to win like it did, that was awesome. Nasak Diamond. Yeah, it won a race at New Plymouth over 3,210 metres. And – yeah, it was a good win there, and that form stacks up down there in the mighty Taranaki, as we know. Not at Harwood, though, just be careful on that. At New Plymouth, <laughs> 3,210 metres. Extreme race day, I think they call it. It won that into the Jericho and rolled it, rolled them there, didn't they? Too good. That horse has gone from a rating 65 over 3,220 metres or whatever it was into a rating 75 over 2,400 in Pukekohe up to fucking 6,000 metres and... <clears throat> The Jericho. Unbelievable. Is it 6,000 metres now? No, I don't know. <laughs> so it's right. like yeah, yeah. Two miles. It had, it had failed twice in New Zealand post New Plymouth. I was like, ah, I'm probably not this time. I backed against it, actually. Mm. And, yeah, just pissed in. You know who did back it? Matty, Punt IQ. He had it. Did Value he? Player of the Day. Yeah, yeah. Wow. He had it at nines, I think. So good on you, Matty. That's a good tip Sharp out as tipping. well. Was that Sharp. him uh, posting his own story then, was it? Must have been, yeah. <laughs> well, is that right? Self-promotion? Yeah. yeah. That doesn't sound like Matty. That's, uh, <laughs> come on. M&M's, eh? Hey, you've got to let people know when you win one, eh? That's uh, that's good on you. Good on you, Matty. And, uh, yeah, well done to everybody involved with NASAC Diamond as well. 
Remember to get your, um, as we mentioned at the top of the show, the Karaka Millions tickets are, say, uh, are selling, but also the Punters Club's open. Secret Santa's coming up. I think mine's in a couple of weeks' time. I'm really looking forward to my little envelope going around and seeing somebody open up their little $30 uh, Karaka Millions. Nice. It's going to make a big dent in the profit, eh, or in the, in the pool. What are we at? We are at 46000 this afternoon, so let's call it fifty k. Okay. Why not? Why not? And yeah, I was giving out a little 50 at a Christmas function last night, a little Christmas dinner, a BGP hat with a bet slip inside it. That's a hell of a secret Santa gift that is. But anyway, 50K in the Putters Club. Don't forget as well, if you're in before Christmas, you have a chance, if you put in $20 or more, to have your steak doubled. Not your bloody rump or (laughs) your sirloin. We're talking your steak that you put into the Punters Club. Ten people are going to have their steak doubled. So good luck to everybody that's involved. I'll be, <clears throat> excuse me, when you're tucking into your ham on Christmas Day, I'll be drawing those out one at a time, <laughs> working Christmas Day. Just quietly, is that Matty and myself involved as well? We're all in. So Matty takes his multi from uh, the other week and puts it all in. Ooh, yep. He's got a chance to double it. He does. Yeah. So even people that have invested up until this time? Yes. Okay. Spot on. Everybody involved before the 24th. Will be a chance. Yeah, and so let's just be clear: you have you put in five hundred bucks as an example, then you go back and you put in another five hundred bucks. You got two chances. Not entirely sure on the T's and C's, Dan. <laughs> 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 okay, but one of them will be doubled up, mate. Right. Not both okay. of them. He's always looking for an opportunity for a maximum bet job. I'll tell <laughs> he you. Is. That was his option there. But you keep putting your five hundreds in, mate, and we'll let you know on the twenty fifth. All right. Are you nervous about the next six weeks, Luke, or are you excited because you've got a bloody busy time coming up? Yeah, I'm excited actually. I was writing my script today for the old walk up oh, video, the old Phil Gould. And I tell you what, fuck. It could be the best one yet. Is it? Uh, it is. It's clever, it's creative, and it should bring yeah, a bit of hype around it. So, right. well, Last year's one where you actually – I think you go out to Karaka every year, don't you? But last year's was very good. So if you could top that, bloody hell. Yeah, we'll be hard to top. We'll be going – yeah, we'll, yeah. Wait, like, we'll keep we'll keep the people guessing. Yeah, so yeah. Just quietly, if if you wouldn't mind maybe bringing a bit of the grassroots into it, it'll be <laughs> very pretty helpful. <laughs> West Coast, what have you done for the grassroots? Yeah. Uh, speaking of grassroots, what's going on on Sunday at Eddington? Oh fuck all! Apparently, I, don't know, I haven't <laughs> seen anything about it. That, and that's not to take the piss. That is genuinely serious question because we've been talking about it all week. Yeah, well, I messaged you guys the other day and I go, "What do you guys know about this?" <laughs> and you guys, like, I don't know, I didn't even know it was happening. Ah, yeah, yeah, I remember that last year. Yeah, the biggest harness meet. You know, one of the biggest, you know, well, I mean, we've just come off the back a couple weeks, but we've got eight group ones. Yeah. And a group three. And they're all worth about 100 grand each, aren't they? Or more, yeah, yeah. So we've got the New Zealand uh, Pacing Derby, the uh, New Zealand Oaks, we've got the two year old group one, we've got the uh, two year old Colts and Geldings, two year old Phillies, we've got Trotters, we've got two year old Trotters, three year old Trotters, four year old Trotters. We've, we've got like a free for all pace, and we've got a free, it's like, there's really good races. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and all the best horses. I'll tell you what happens. It's all these blokes, mate, you know, that sit there. They've been in the grassroots for a long time. They complain about BGP. You know, it's those people. They do fuck all for the industry. They don't promote their big day. And then they blame other people. Oh, why aren't people coming to this? Mate, you sat by and you watched. Nothing happened. Do something. That's what's happening, mate. Do something. 100%. In, heat there. <laughs> oh, in summary, I was shocked when you mentioned that on Wednesday, and uh, I think it's it's just it's just really disappointing because I'm going to sit down and watch it now that I know that it's on. And had I known that it's on two weeks ago, that would have been probably been even better because I might have watched some races leading up to it to see who was going to be running into it. Like that's I'm not even a harness racing fan, but six group ones, it's like one real. day like that is Eight. bigger than anything. <laughs> <Gallops>. Eight. <laughs> Eight. Mate, like that's more than the gallops do anywhere. So apart let, from me, Kanaka let me promote this for you. We've got Merlin. We've got um, Dreams of Pat. We've got like all uh, Self Assured, the race winner, the New Zealand Cup winner. Um, we've got well, we don't have Millwood Nike anymore. Seventeen wins unbeaten, but we've got um, Old Town Road. No, we don't. <laughs> sorry, <laughs> Auckland, <laughs> yeah. Auckland Reactor. Oh, All <laughs> <Old> Tiger. All <laughs> Tiger. Super, Super Duper Luca. No, no, he's in the paddock. <laughs> oh, um, Captain Crunch. <laughs> That's that'll, the passing lane. That'll, oh. be there, that'll be there. Yeah. Matt Cross will be there. It's, it's yeah, there. we got Matt Cross, surely. Yeah. But I tell you what, after you fucking made a shit ton on Saturday off all of our best bets, fingers crossed, touch wood, um, why don't you sit down on Sunday and enjoy the harness, get stuck in, 
And um, I think a couple of the boys got their best bets at the harness on Sunday as well. Yep. So we've got something to follow there. Um, but I guess here's the here's the formal announcement of um, of the, the harness racing at Addington 8 Group 1s on Sunday. Great idea. It's a yeah. great idea. And shout out to the Scam Man and Fitzy. Yep. No doubt they'll be putting some selections up, as will Gasso into the Facebook group. They're doing things to promote the race day. So you grass rope. Grassroots bastards. <laughs> what are you doing for the game? Yeah, it's not to have a crack. It is genuinely to bring some awareness and, yeah, like, get better at it because it's uh, it's going to be a great day. It's going to be a great day. One race that will be promoted is the race by Grins. What, is anything organised to go there? C- Cambridge, April? Are you, you've put this in the run sheet. <laughs> yeah. Luke, does that mean we're going? Well, Dan, surely we're going down there, mate. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, no what are Absolutely fucking no idea. But let me tell you about Cambridge. It's like the Pukekohe... Uh, the County's Cup. Uh, oh, yeah. I told you a couple of stories about that, how it gets loose. The old Cambridge port- is not like, enough portal loose. Oh, mate, Cambridge is out the gate as well. Is that? Um, it's like a, it's a quaint little track, little town. You're going to have to get a motel and stay the night because it, uh, it's going to get rowdy. They actually put a, um, a stage in the infield, and then after the last race, they have like a DJ, and then they have like a party on the track as well. Uh, last year when I went down, they went down there with me old man, and I was sober driver, so... Um, it was a little bit different for me, but um, man, it looked like a hell of a good time. And I think going back this time, uh, BGP are going to be putting on an event. No details yet, but we're going to work on it in the new year. <laughs> yeah, um, sounds great, mate. But it's it sounds like Royal yeah. Ramwick. It's going to be yeah, it does. it's going to be awesome. Fuck, we got the Karaka Millions to go first, I suppose, though, eh? But yeah, bloody hell, it it one, bridge really a, one bridge at a time. It's yeah. Super Duper Luca, Super Duper Luca. How do you say it? Super Duper Luca. No, yeah. no, he'll be in Australia. What oh, about uh, Captain Crunch? What's the passing lane at Cambridge? <laughs> uh, Nivelly Always be Mickey. No, yeah, no, no. Oh, actually, I don't know. It might be no, Nivelly. Yeah, no, the no, stud, no. isn't it? Nivelly right. Yeah. Is that right? I don't know. Aaron White. I've heard him say that a few times. Yeah. Anyway, lads, let's focus on some galaxies and get ahead to this racing. That's been a good chat. It's been a very, <laughs> very good chat. Good intro. In summary, Ted's amazing. We're welcoming Ulrika to the New Zealand jockey ranks, and the harness racing needs to increase their promotion because people need to know what's going on. Yeah, give the people what they want. Group one weekend, turn to them. Like we said, keep your best bets coming in, please. People, we want to know what your best bets are. We'll get to those. Adam and Luke will have a look through the uh, the social pages just after we've gone through these uh, races. We'll go through the Wakefield, the Tab Classic. The lads are fired up about this one, and I think Luke might have a best bet on that, which isn't a surprise at all. And then we'll go to uh, Pukekohe for the Bone Crusher Stakes. Wakefield Challenge Stakes. We talked about the Karaka Millions two-year-old. There's some running around in that. Luke, I know, has done loads of form for this weekend. So we'll go to Dan first, who's got 1,400 bets and a load-up <laughs> job. Is that right? Uh, MBJ. MBJ, okay. Yeah. What have we got in this one, mate? Uh, well, this one, um, interesting. We're going to see uh, the Poetic <laughs> Champion come back after being beaten up a little bit by Velocious. Um, and interesting, uh, the the... Form is gonna gonna kind of clash with Red Sea as well because Red Sea uh, got run down in Veloce's first up win, um, but I am gonna look a little bit further down the page and I'm gonna go not necessarily based on race form and who it's beaten and who it's raced, but just on like history. Um, Walker Burgesson, Opie Bossum, captured by love, mm. five hundred and twenty-five thousand dollar yearling. From the Magic Millions, so they've spent some fucking coin on this thing. How did you find that out? Uh, in the New Zealand Herald. You, Mick, that, Mickey G. That's deep form. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was reading a couple of different things, but that was... Uh, no, actually, it wasn't. Sorry. It was NZ Ra- Love Racing. Love Racing. No. Uh, it was just an article that flew by that I had a little bit of a read, and I thought, fucking hell, they're throwing some chips on this thing. Yeah. <laughs> had a little bit of a look. But like, more to the point, like, how can you discount Opie Bossum mm. and Mark Walker... Or Tiakau in any two-year-old race ever. Yeah. Um, I think statistically, if you look back probably over the last five years, their percentage win rate would be so high. Um, yes, it's only had one start. looked okay. Um, I mean, it won. It done what it needed to do. But at $5 and $2, I'm willing to what, what, when did it have a go on that. Yeah. Lovely stuff. Are we going to get a good track firstly, boys, at Pukekohe? Hey, oh, it's Trentham, sorry. This is Trentham, yeah. Yeah, I, yeah, yeah weather's okay. It, but it was both so- tracks, good? Yeah, both tracks okay. Ni- Niwa is telling us it's going to be dry from now on. Shout out to Niwa. Beautiful. <laughs> well, yeah, Red Sea was pretty bloody good first up, I thought. 
uh, I was on and got beat, got rolled. Oh, so, by Velocious, eh? Yeah, yeah. And, and late in the piece there too, hard, straight, down there on the rail uh, at Tarapa, but beaten by one better that's then gone out and franked that form again. So concern barrier 11, obviously, but we're 3.8 into 3.2. I'll be going again just on sort of that exposed form and being able to see how it goes. Barrier 11, always tricky, especially for, you know, a two-year-old, like all of these things. When that baby's one wrong move and, and she's all over, you know, you miss the miss the jump or don't get in and whatnot, and you're, you get a very hard run. So I'm going to put uh, Red Sea on top <clears throat> and hopefully Warren Kennedy can get the job done. We've got the Cambridge stud colours on, so I think it would only be fitting. Lucky you've got the Cambridge stud colours on or we wouldn't be able to see you, mate. Yeah, I know. You've, shit. <laughs> you got a green shirt on, you're bleeding in with the screen. Can't Get see on. your bears either. Good work. <laughs> oh, yeah. I thought it was a bit weird before. My arm kept on disappearing. It's because of the uh, green bear, I see. Okay. okay. Um, I went, Dan, I probably landed on about where you did, to be honest. I just thought uh, OP Boston on. I didn't realise they'd bought it for 525 grand, which is a big purchase, uh, and it went really good last time. Out of the, the sort of... Favourites as well. I thought Poetic Champion, I reckon it probably worked reasonably hard early in that race last start, so probably willing to forgive a third to, to um, Velocious there. Thought it went quite well. A couple of value. What about Donna Chiara, um, the other uh, Walker Burgesson runner that actually hasn't run yet, but I took some notes last night. First trial flew home just behind about last night, who had just won, who has just won first up. Second trial wasn't too far off Montana Bay, who ran well on Saturday behind Maracadu. On debut for Taco, fourteen dollars and three eighty. Don't know. That seems like pretty good value to me. And the only one of the three that's crack a million. The other two are bought by the Magic Millions. Is I that think. right? Yeah. Shit, that adds another dimension to it as well, doesn't it? Okay, so this doesn't have much to do with the Karaka Millions then. My intro to the race makes no sense. That's all good. Thanks, Dan. Good work. All right. Well, I think Red Sea Poetic Champion and uh Yeah. No, there's, that, I think there's four in there. Good. Okay, that's that's enough. That's enough. Uh, right, good luck to everybody that's having a crack in that. Sounds like we're around Captured by Love and Red Sea for Luke, who has taken some money. That is awesome. Let's get to the one that everybody wants to talk about, though. Formerly the Captain Cook Stakes, pre deferred beat Aegon in this last year. I think Aegon was just about odds-on favourite. pre defers first, Group 1. Everyone was so pleased to see that um, because the horse has been such a good horse for Taako and for everybody, for all the punters too. This year it's the Tab Classic. I uh, don't know whether it means we've got more stakes because the Tab are investing in it, but it's a great race, and Aegon is back for it. Pre-defer is back for it. Uh, and there might be one coming in of a little open handicap that might be pretty good as well. Oh, I cannot wait to watch this race. I love this race, the old Captain Cook stakes. Reminds me of the great horse, Kawi. He's big, bold, black, and he's back when he dusted them down there in 2017, I think it might have been. Anyway, a horse that I feel can do the same on Saturday, a horse called Habana. Drawn barrier six. I think this is a group one horse in the making. It's won seven from 14. Good track. That's what we want to see. Happy days up to the mile. Last time it got to the mile, got beaten by white noise, which very hard horse to follow, mm -hmm. so hard to sort of line up. But... Uh, we had to watch that on a heavy track, a heavy 10 at Pukekohe. Now, I think class probably just got it through that, and then they put it aside. But I think this has probably been the target from the start. We're going to get a good track. Number nine, drawn barrier six. Outstanding for me, seven fifty, two dollars seventy, $2.70, even back to top four, $2.30. Now, it is a good field. And there are many chances in here, but some of those have drawn out. Desert Lightning, for instance. Now, third up, probably want to be having a go, but not second up. Aegon, drawn out barrier 17. Sounds like this horse could be a little bit underdone, so I'll be staying away from that. Call sign Mav, good horse, uh, willing to risk. He's a doozy. Probably wasn't as bad as that run, well, as the ninth looks on his yeah. page there. But I just thought, I couldn't believe it when it came up 7.5. I'll be taking that all day long, and I already have. You definitely have taken it. Yeah. <laughs> I have, haven't I? I really want it to come home for you, mate. So do I. There's one actually down the bottom of the book. I think it's quite a nice horse. And what? how do we pronounce this thing? Frangelini? Bartolini. What's that? 
Is it Fargaloni? Isn't it Far- 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 Fargaloni? Far- Far- Fuck knows. It's <laughs> Fargaloni. Like, an Italian person to tell us what's happening. Yeah, but... Fargaloni. <laughs> <laughs> there he is. What's the guy that owns the Italian restaurant? That oh, one, the group one? Daniel one? Narclay. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I've been in there twice Give now. Give me a call, brother. Standing, <laughs> aren't you, Daniel? Have oh, you been there? Oh, it's great. What, since we talked about yeah, it? Yeah, twice. Oh, Are you serious? Oh, mate, it's so good. The pizza's <laughs> outstanding. The pizza's, yeah. Yeah, yeah, great. Fuck, you're a lad. That's outstanding. Well, I'm just waiting to meet John Key there. He owns a horse with him. Oh. Did wow. you meet Daniel Narclay there? No, no, no. But they all look like him. <laughs> <laughs> Family affair, apparently. Yeah, yeah I think it is. <laughs> I, I haven't asked, but I feel like I must be. <laughs> Shit, we'll clip that out and send it over to him. Did you have any rewind? What do you reckon the Matt, service? Take away, mate. I take away. Uh, oh, take my, away. My wife went there last night. Service was great. She had a pork belly, which was exceptional. Just, it's great. Everything about it. I've talked to somebody else about this, who it's their mum's favourite restaurant too, and they go there all the time. Valare. Valare and Manurewa. Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> get yourself out there. Yeah. Sorry to interrupt. Yeah, well, well. If you boys want to go and have a beachy beat then let me know. It's just around the corner from my house. True. Like, it? there. It's halfway between us, Probably mate. It's perfect. Yeah. Ah, you I'll, might have to I'll jump in an Uber <laughs> <laughs> I'll get the scooter I'll be on the scooter <laughs> Scoot down the motorway Anyway this horse was pretty good um, All for, for Aglioni <laughs> Back to it <laughs> Drawn barrier 15 this time At one two starts ago At Trentham And yeah came out And it was second to um, Campionessa And I just thought it was, a, it was a huge run Only just behind it as well Malt time was in there It was a, it was a really good field So I wouldn't be surprised To see that horse um, Really storming home Late in the piece. So those are the two. I'm going to go rough. I'm going to take on those favourites. They can all get bent and get up, Habana. Go on, Brian. Show us your pace. Pay for Christmas. <laughs> Good luck, Luke, mate. I absolutely love that. Dan, you in the same camp? Yep. Yeah, I've been in the Habana camp for a fucking while now. And the worst thing is, is that any of the other, I've got three other multis going into Habana. Um, all of them are at four dollars or six dollars, so that's fucking great. And then when it opened up at seven fifty, I was like, "Are you kidding me? Yeah, <laughs> unbelievable." Gift. Um, so yep, Habana, 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 Habana. I cannot say it anymore. The one that I am going to say is that I think uh, I'm going to have a little saver on a little each way saver, um, and this fucking thing is the worst thing to follow. Fashion shoot, uh, Opie Bossum. I just. I, just the way that it won last time when it came through the middle and just absolutely stormed home looked like this time in the 1600 was right up its alley. Um, that was and, the Canterbury Breeders Stakes, wasn't it, down at Rickerton? Yeah. And now, look, it, it's got a very thin form line over 1600, but this horse is such a quirky horse that it could all come down to the way that it was ridden on the day. Mm. If they just drop this thing out the back and they go hard and it – Pierces through and gets a run through. Um, that for me, I just think a little each way saver, just in case I get rolled bold and a hold. Um, I think I'll have a little bit of an each way on that. Um, how, how good's your Habana forming? You've been you've beaten El Vencedor last start as well. Yeah, doesn't yeah. that get you fired up? And then El Vencedor comes and puts three lengths on them on Saturday. Go on. Habana's <laughs> definitely been finishing the best out of all of them. If you watch their re- replays, like when it got clear, <laughs> should, we, should we just fucking should we just empty the bank account, guys? And just oh, look, mate, I've got one cent here? left. <laughs> I already have. <laughs> empty it. Oh, yeah, have maybe. a crack. Have a crack. <laughs> Oh no, it's good, and you're right, Luke. I didn't, I didn't realize actually. I, I did do some form around this, but I didn't kind of think about the wide barrier draws too much. And you're right, all of those horses. Aegon seventeen. Um, Desert Lightning was one that I was really looking forward to seeing third up, but it's drawn barrier 16 and it just, I think this horse will win a group race, if not a group one, but I just, this might not be it from barrier 16, could be a little bit tough. Uh, I've had a crack at the top four Habana just because there's so many that could win it, but honestly, the one that just keeps coming back to me and at a ridiculous price is Riadini. Get out. <laughs> Get out. No, 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 why? Like, like uh. Nigel. I know, I know, and this it might just not have it anymore, but this thing over 1,600 metres weight for age ran second behind Very Elegant two years ago. It was third behind Probabil and Epsom like two years ago. Its last run in a heavy track at Tauranga wasn't that bad. It kept on going. It was bloody wet. It kept on going. First up, it was running on over 1,200 metres. Looked like it might win 1,600. This has run well in Australia, and it could at $21 just come in there and be too good for them. It might just have too much class, or... It may just not be that good anymore. Oh, hopefully the latter, unfortunately. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Mr. Nigel Tiley uh, read an article today, and he, he he seemed to think that, like, you know, since this horse came back to Australia, it's sort of taken him a while to get a grasp and get a handle on 
how to train this thing, and he thinks he's figured it out. Oh, I just don't need this. So, uh, <laughs> so home- figure it out next we'll start. Just next yeah. start. Yeah. Yeah, away from Pukekohe, probably, yeah. And it may be uh, next start. It's, 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 draw, it's yeah. uh, nominated for the Thornton Mile, so maybe that's a, I, I don't know, but, yeah. Then there's the Beal? Uh, I don't know. I don't know if it goes up to that distance. Oh, I think it might do. Hey, March 2023, actually February, I think, uh, Habana beats two horses, <laughs> Thunder and Gino Severini. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah. if that's not form, well, I don't know what it is. Gino's beat it in Riodini. Yeah, Gino beat Riodini by eight lengths. <laughs> Last start, mate. That Come on, up, it? mate. I, I'm with you. I'm with you on Habana. I, I think it's uh, going so well. I just, I don't know. When I saw Riadini come back, I thought that's a bloody good horse. And if it's what it was, then it could win a lot. Got to be a hell of a race. Um, it, on. it is going to be absolutely outstanding. <laughs> that is at four fifty-five on Saturday afternoon. Luke, you are absolutely loaded up on Habana. <laughs> what happens at five? Oh, if Habana wins. I'll be up at 4.55 a.m. <laughs> waiting for the race. Having to wait 12 hours. 5 p.m. Saturday, I don't know. You know, might just turn the page and have a look at the next race and just sit there comfortably. Probably, eh? Probably load some into the punters club. <laughs> yeah, good idea, eh? We've had a go here. Oh, uh, it's good. So you're not out watching Habana on Saturday, are you? You're that fizzed up. It's like a rugby game. Yeah, no, not uh, not going to be down there in Trentham or, or out and about, but I'll definitely be watching. I'll be watching. Good luck to everybody involved. Keep your best bets coming in. We'll get to the bone crusher and then we'll get your best bets as well. We want to know if you guys think Habana's your best bet for the weekend, if it's going to come in, could Riadini be your best bet or anything else on the card? We'll get them read out. Riadini definitely won't be anyone's best bet. We can guarantee that. Anywho, yeah, I'll tell you what will be. Bone crusher stakes at Pukekohe this Saturday. What's What, what have I missed? <laughs> you all right, mate? Yeah, yeah. I'm just, yeah, we're... We're 20 minutes out for the end, and I'm struggling. Oh, is that what's happening? That's the best bet. Dollar or two. We're going quite long here. You might need a break. I don't know. Yeah. We, uh, if anyone could come and stand in for Dan Rack for about 30 seconds. <laughs> the, uh, the Bone Crusher, Group mm. 3 level, mate. Crushing bones. Looking forward to it. My word. Little three-year-old. Yeah, look. Look, the money for Lupo Solitario. I think we did our ass last start, didn't we? We got beaten up. We got a bit carried away. We took the $4. We couldn't get it done, but it was still a hell of a run from this horse. He ended up drifting out to 5.8, but Croquetti, just too good. That form has obviously been franked, but 2.4 today into 1.8. Oh, now, my God. Also, money from for our mate who got scratched last week, and they probably had a bit more time to get a bit of work into this horse. Um, Orgestral. If that's the pronunciation, but drawn barrier eight. I think that's your Quinella. Lupo, a one with the five. That's that's me. When I was looking through the New Zealand Herald, I learned that orchestral was bought for about seven hundred and fifty thousand dollars. I wasn't, that's a joke, but I oh, did read a love racing article as well. That it's fuck that's a lot of money for a horse. Shit, so it's actually worth seven hundred Jeezys. That might be a slight exaggeration, but it was in the upper hundreds. Wow. It must be a good horse. Wow. And uh just quietly, I mean, going back to the form last week after it got scratched, but three starts ago, it ran second, and it ran past on the one only Molly, Molly Bloom. Boom. Mm. Um, so Boom. that form stacks up. It obviously struggled last start. I really like Orchestral. Um, I love Lupo Solitario. Uh, got on early at the 2.4, so I was really happy with that. Um, but Croquetti, like, I mean, it's Frank the Four. Look, that's a really good horse. Yeah. Uh, if that's the only horse to beat this horse so far... There's no Crocetti in this race. Yeah, I think Crocetti, just thinking about that 2,000 guineas again, do you reckon it would have won by that much if Taliska didn't push it? Do you know what I mean? Like, they just gapped the rest of that field. Do you reckon Crocetti's that good that Crocetti was basically just like, fuck off, Taliska, I am winning this, and just found another level? Potentially. I mean, horses do that, eh? Like, when, they, when they've got other horses coming up again, it's like, it's like any athlete, you know? Like, when you've got someone coming up, and you're just better, like you just do enough to put put them mm. away. Um, but also, like, I mean, he, well, he's not necessarily put, like, really big margins on horses, has he? Um, like, he's won, and he's won pretty well, but not by, you know, like, it was it was probably six links back to yeah. third, wasn't it? Yeah, it was, it was, yeah, it was, it was an outstanding race. But anyway, it looks like the punters are confident that the She's Aloof Bay Gelding uh, by Satono Aladdin can uh, get the job done at a dollar eighty. Will I you think, be on? I think that might have been Seabiscuit that looks the horses in the eyes in that movie. You know, they just the jockey just says, "Just get it next to that horse." Is that right? Seabiscuit. Oh. Have you watched that movie? 
Don't know if I have. Ah, oh, yep. Have a look. It's good. I think it's got that bloke from Lord of the Rings in it. Anyway, Emotional. Haven't uh, seen that either. Love horse racing movies. It's great. We just watch horse racing all the time. Uh, Lupo Solitario is awesome. Orchestral. I don't know. I haven't looked into it enough. Uh, I thought the other um, uh, James Wellwood runner, Sudbina, has been pretty good and just wondered whether at $10 and two seventy, it might have been worth a crack. It was three wide and only 2.5 lengths off all of those 1,000 guineas horses in the soliloquy. Uh, and the format of that's obviously been huge. And also in that race was Glamour Tycoon, who won the O'Leary Stakes on Saturday too. Bet them up. One yes. easy. So yeah. um, we've got uh, vacuuming coming <laughs> in. Uh, can you come around to my <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, we need a vacuum. Cheers, Adam. Great work, mate. Uh, Taking any? <laughs> but, but far away, mate. Yeah, right. Come on, uh, If you shout them out to Valare, they'll be in. Yes. Uh, yeah, so I wondered whether Sudbina could do the job. Takeshi, obviously, has got a pretty big rap on it too. Uh, Livid Sky was my best bet at Tauranga a couple of weeks ago, and then it pissed down, so that was no good. But yeah, Lupo Solitario, the Crochetti form, obviously everybody thinks that stacks up. That'll be a really, really nice race to watch, actually, as well. Um, a small field, but a pretty quality field too. So hopefully uh, by that time of the day, 3.18, you've won some money and you can load it up on Habana. And the Tab Classic, lads. Let's get to the comments and see what people are thinking and where they're going to be putting their... There's um, a doozy in putting, there, isn't there? ...putting their money this week. Yes. Adam's been dealing with um, vacuum cleaners, so he isn't <laughs> quite ready to go. Oh, you, you, you good, mate? Yeah, I was... Uh, <laughs> the, the, the way you mentioned that as well, I feel like you've seen the comments, which is going on as well. Yeah, but I can't find it. I tried to click on it, it's gone. Oh, I, <clears> I deleted that because that was ridiculous. So we had just had one that was a... Um, please... In, in a... In a language I have no idea what it was, please call my WhatsApp oh. and all this other stuff. It was, um, there was a bit of prof- profanity in it as well, so I will save us all the thing there. And I have no idea what that was. That was massive. So I do apologize. I did get that. But having a phone number at the end, I felt like it was only right to go. Um, it was just a Russian oh, dog call him. person. What's that? <laughs> Baba. Might be Swedish. Baba Amosi Dokatala. Yeah. Oh, it wasn't uh, the Swedish. Big message. Uh, yeah, no, it was massive. But I do have... Um, uh, Tony saying that he's happy to say that Ted and him are on uh, Marikatu at 26s. He oh, the Karaka Millions. On the Karaka Millions yeah, as well. That's good. And um, we do have a great New Zealander here of Edward who says that he ha- already has his tickets to the BGP as well. Yes. Is that, is that Ed Patterson? Uh, oh, no, Edward. That, yeah, Ed, Edward. Yeah, Edward, yeah. Yep. yeah. So, um, yeah, no, there, there was a bit on there, eh, uh, Luke, in that message. I didn't quite yeah, know how to take that. Yeah, I did delete that one. Oh, I actually spotted this one from Sharon. <laughs> Sharon Blake. Shazza. She says, is there any reason you use the filthy language? Is it necessary? Does it make you feel bigger or better? Oh, I'll sorry, go, Sharon. Go. Look, when we originally designed BGP, it was all a bit of fun with people that were a bit younger. Um, so we're sorry if it offends you. Uh, you don't have to watch if you don't like. That's fine as well. Um, because the swearing will probably stay. It doesn't make me feel bigger or better, but when we get a little bit fired up and excited, we can swear, but maybe we should put a warning on it. Uh, and Kevin Cheesem says he agrees with Sharon as well. But anyway, you can't please everyone. Just ask your kids. Now, the next uh, comment <laughs> is, uh, yep, we've got, oh, P-Dub, Paul Wilcox. Yes, I have. So obviously he's got his tickets to the car. Oh, yeah, good, CEO. good. Uh, Jack Walker says Red Sea in a couple of emojis there. So that looks like that could be the bet of the day for Jack. Now, I'm just struggling to find the post from the other day asking what people's best bets are. But I see, you wouldn't believe it, there are 69 comments on there. Hey, that's nice. Horny. It's really nice. Horny. <laughs> Keith Bright says best bet, race six, number one, Lupo Solitario at Pukekohe. And best value, Pukekohe, race seven, number 15, pick of the litter. Uh, Kane Beardsmore Ranwick race four number four Diamond Diesel thirteens and fours Darren Russell Tiaka winner of the third race at New Plymouth which one though what the hell uh, Quinton McIntyre best Bonnie Lass value Sniper's Dream Dave Devenzo says following Ted will be my best bet quite smart uh, Alan Davis you like this whatever Dan tips on the podcast when it's on when it's on what a legend from Ozdan maximum bet job cheers mate do you know Ozdan no nah, never yeah. met him well I, look who knows. Honestly, <laughs> yeah. maybe. <laughs> Balin Connolly, Wellington Phoenix and Adelaide Strikers, women's multi. Okay, nice one. Uh, Hayley Anderson, am liking hard attack each way in the two-year-old race. Michael Con- Conan, Red Sea. There are just tips on tips on tips here. 
So people are fired up. And P-Dub again, Paul Wilcox, says that will be out of tickets. Now, that is the CEO of the old uh, Ellerslie that we're going to be at on the 27th. Now, I did get a message before, and they said, confirming you have gone past 400 tickets. Overall ticket sales are nuts. Silks sold out 3.5 hours after we officially went on sale. Less than 25 Birdcage, the Garden Party rebranded, tickets are available. So the Garden Party, which used to be the uh, the go-to for a lot of people, only 25 tickets left to that. 25? They've got a new precinct, the Grove, on the New Market Lawn, which is, I think, down in front of us. It's basically where I'd want to be on a race day. All day grazing, a beverage package, DJ, cool vibes. They've put a bunch of reserve tables of 10 in there and mostly unreserved single tickets. All the tables were snapped up yesterday and over 50% of the tickets are gone to that area as well. Bring it on. This place... They might have to put the old sign up. Sold out. The joint is going to be rocking. Now, I also heard back from our source about putting on the songs and taking over the audio. They said, Good. easy as piss, mate. Is P-Dub listening? Yes. Good. So he knows. <laughs> he knows. He's, he's, he's now on notice. He, you're on notice, P-Dub. That's good work in the background there, Luke. Thanks, mate. That's perfect. Outstanding. There's, there's, ch- there's, there's chances of the live podcast getting streamed across the whole of Ellerslie. Yeah, and, uh, <laughs> yours is my insight on what's coming next. People are going to be all confused. TMB going to make a fortune. Yeah, you know, you know what Coldplay do when they sell out? They just do another show the next night. Can we just organise for another race meeting the next? Can day? we just do another one? The rerun. Yeah, the rerun. Oh, imagine that. Honestly, it's going to be massive, eh? Yeah. I, it just gives you bloody. You can just think about Ellerslie. It's kind of hard to because we haven't been there for so long, but. Oh, it's going to be massive. Yeah. I went there on the weekend and had a little walk around. Did, Did you? Yeah. Did yeah, you walk took, the track? Yeah, no, I took my son to go play golf, and then um, he fell asleep on the way there, so I just parked in the car park and just walked around and just... Uh, I, like, yeah, I literally work. just climbed the fence, just walked around the Good walked around the track, and I just thought, fucking come on. <laughs> the final question. So have you booked Winston in as guest MC yet, or at least a slot on the stream on the Saturday? Fuck, he's welcome. He'll be there. Absolutely. Yeah. He'd be coming up for a look, surely. Be rude if he didn't. <clears throat> as long as you don't mind him darting in the room. <laughs> yes. And that's not anyone he's cool, is it? It's- if you set the sprinklers off Winston and ruin our day, <laughs> <laughs> there'll be hell on. There'll be hell on. He's a real character, old Winston, isn't he? I can't believe he's back. But he is. It's uh, good. Savoir Fair. Yeah, Australia. Thoughts? Six bucks into 5.50. Is it? And guess who's up? Wood Moon Pin. Oh, how good. It's rhetorical in that race as well from Taco. No, he's it? earlier in the day in the oh, valley. Right. Okay. Uh, yeah, Savoir Fair. You liked it, Luke, a few weeks ago, didn't you? Or, you, or did you just mention that? Yeah, no, up to 2,000 metres it was, and it uh, absolutely rolled them with an apprentice on, claiming oh, well, a bit. Asshole. Very good. Yeah, very, very good. Uh, Dan, I know you've got 14 punts. Is there anything else you've got some MB, MBJs on? No MBJs, but I do have a few to look at. Um, so, uh, Dan Zeno, the, my mm. best bet from last week that got scratched, is racing in race seven. Um, now, I my best bet's in that same race, and it's not Dan Zeno this week. Okay. Um, I just think the it was supposed to race 2,400 last week. It's coming back. It's racing 2,100. It's carrying a lightweight, so there's a lot of pros. It's got a terrible draw. I think it's drawn 16. But in saying that, I'm going to quinella that with my best bet because I think they could run 1-2. The other one that I like is race 5, Pukekohe, and this is another one that I mentioned a couple of weeks ago that didn't get a start is Kiang Lucky. Um I just like the horse. I've already backed it. It's 12 bucks. Um, I thought it didn't have the rub of the green fresh up, and I think second up, $12 is a good price to find out if it's a good horse or not. The other one is one that just fucking keeps on winning, Can't Hunter. Mm. Um, it's won two in a row, um, and this thing just it might just piss in again. Um, the only thing is it's quite short this time. Like, it's 450 or 5 bucks or something. Like the last two starts that it's won, Early, we've had 14 or $15, and so I was willing to sort of take that price. Um, last start, it went 14 or 15 into 515 after scratchings. Um, sorry, four, 14's into $5 or something like that after scratchings, and, you know, maybe a bit of money came for it. I don't know if I want to back it at 450 or $5, but um, it's hard to fucking knock. It's winning form. Form, mate. Yeah. You've like, not just keep winning. Shares so message, like, have you? Yeah. Not, it's not, probably, not it might be my mum. Shares has been deleted. <laughs> <laughs> it's your mum named Sharon. Shares yeah. has been deleted, mate. Don't worry. Shares. We can carry on. Is that right? Okay, that's good. So, sorry, mum. Oh, she's just sorry, mum. She's, she's worried. She's worried. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, goodness me. Shares a rack. Old, uh, okay. Old card hunter. That would be great. I think it's going for four in a row. Oh, no, three in a row, three isn't in a row. it? 
I actually nearly made one on that race my best bet called Terra Mitica. Just because I was looking at that race thinking, the only horse in there that's got any form is Khan Hunter, and surely it can't win three races in a row. That's really, really hard to do. This Terra Mitica thing, a stayer coming out, come over from UK, it's quite young, I think, or it's, it's not raced a lot. Um, but it's raced over 1,500 metres last up, and it was it was, it was was all right, and it was quite good fresh up over 1,200 metres. Steps up to 2,100 metres, where it, you know, that's its preferred distance by the look of its stats. Um, and it's got Cambridge start Lance Noble at Pukekohe. I just wondered whether that might be a really good bet, because nothing else in that race is going very good, apart from Car Hunter. Yeah, good on you, mate. Maybe you can them up. Yeah. What? A, yeah, good idea. Jeez, that's... <laughs> I'd never think about Cornelis, apart from... <laughs> well, we probably should have last week because we were talking about Snazzy Tevi mm. with Fortune's son. Yes, Fortunate Son. Fortunate, Fortunate son. son, yeah. They run one, two, $14 Cornella. Yeah, all I heard yeah. was Snazzy Tevi. Easy work. Like, it was Cambridge Stud Colours too. They, like, at Pukekohe, there's just something going on there. Yeah, it was... That's that Lorado form, that same race, that same form race. Just They just keep winning. <sighs> okay, all right. Well, let's get to the best <laughs> bets. There's then. a couple of things that are sure. Uh... Pukekohe form and hard water form. Yeah. Mm. Mm. Pukekohe sectionals are also really fast. Too. I don't know if you guys have noticed that, but they seem to run pretty quick there. Did we announce the blessed bet at the top of the show before we get to the best bets? I don't <laughs> think we did. Not. I didn't think about it. Really unorganized. We well, what is it? Ted's been tipping winners since Adam was a cowboy, <laughs> and he reckons he can do it again this Saturday. This, this Adam or? Adam, I am. Race number three. Uh, is that right? At Pukekohe. No. Adam, be, I am. Number eight. Race, race number, number eight. eight. Sorry, at Pukekohe. Uh, you are going to get two dollars fifty boosted, so two point two out to two point five. A couple of people have messaged saying, "Surely you just get on till it hurts." <laughs> We've tried that before, haven't we? <laughs> Adam, I am winning. Oh, yeah. yeah, so Adam, I am obviously clean up for us in the punters club, and <laughs> one of the favourites for the million dollar race on the twenty seventh. One point five. One point five. You're right, actually. Yes. So Ted says should be winning. Fill your boots. Take that back. Three-year-olds, 1.5. It's a four-year-old, isn't it, Adam? I am. Yes, it is. Is that the Aotearoa? Three-year-olds. Yes, you're right. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Four-year-old four race is still a million. Yeah. Aotearoa Classic. Yeah. Is that one of the favourites for it? Yeah, remember when uh, Brain them at Hastings yeah, and it yeah, went yeah. into favourite? Yeah. Right. And Legato and Co are in that race. Yeah. Yes. Far out. Okay. Good. Righto. Good on you, Ted. Righto. Well, Ted's best bet, uh, if we rip through them... Uh, Ted's best bet does have Adam I Am involved in it, but he's going for a multi this week. Adam I Am into race three, Pukekohe, Wallen at $2. Wallen's four starts have all been top runs with his last start effort when charging home for a close second, a big effort. He goes one better here. Adam I Am is a very good horse who races in the, in the Legato and Levante colours, has won his last two impressively and can make it three in a row. So that is a $5 multi, I believe, both at Pukekohe. Race three, Wallen. Race 8, Adam, I am. Goat's best, Trentham, race 1. And this is Chrissy Bambury's horse, so you should probably listen, eh, given uh, given the, the connection there. Bella Corno, race 1, Trentham, at $8.50. He loves a long shot. The Goat does. Caught three wide last start on a suicidal pace. Only six in this field and no noted leaders apart from her. Expect her to jump, lead, and stack them up down the long Trentham state, uh, straight. She's a quality filly and will turn her form around on Saturday. That's a pretty even race by the looks of the betting market as well. So Trentham, race one, Balakorno, the goat, loves it. Get involved. Punt IQ, Ascot, race eight, Zaki at $2.70. Jeez, we've heard that horse a little bit. But this explanation, yeah. honestly, I read it this afternoon and thought, shit, why would you not get on? The old boy's taken the trip to the west and he'll show this field a clean pair of heels he drew wide the cox plate worked early and was only beaten 1.4 lengths by romantic warrior he has consistently produced a rating level through his career that the others are yet to achieve there are some lightly raced types that could progress to match but he's the class and j mac is back to ride him good enough for j mac good enough for maddie from punt iq j mac's flying over from bloody um hong kong for this ride as well so like honestly when i read that are you on Oh, I will be. Fire me up. Yeah. That yeah. fucking statement there. That's an explanation. Good enough for him, good enough for me. And if it's good enough for both of them, it's good enough for me too. Yeah, I'd be on. Yes, I'm please. On. Habana comes in, I'm just going all in. All baby. Oh, Would you? All baby. Yeah, sure. Well, you'd have to have a go. Not all in. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> be careful. Yeah, yeah. Dan, mate, what's yours? Uh, me, I am going to Pukekohe Race 7, number 5, Apache Anne. Um <laughs> Boys, you know me. I'm a middle distance 
Um, hang on. Race number seven. I just got myself confused. I was like, Pukekohe race number five. That's not a middle distance race. No, no. Uh, Pukekohe race number seven. Uh, number five, Apache Ann. You guys know me. I love a middle distance rating 65 or rating 75. Interestingly on this race, uh, if you look a little bit further down the page, we've got number 11, Dan Zeno, who was my best bet from last week, but it got scratched. Um, look, Dan Zeno was supposed to be racing in a 2400 um, and had a good draw, but now it's drawn 18 and it's over 2100. So I think it's a little bit short. So for me, Apache Ann, it's last. It looks like it's got a little bit more brilliant. So the 2100, I think it's going to prefer. Courtney Barnes on board. Last start, ran home really nicely and run a good second to its stable mate, Balafactor. Um, so I think the five, or well, it was $6 and $2, but $5.50 and $2.10 for me. Uh, yes, please. Apache Ann, drawn one, race seven, number four. Five. Good, on, good on you, Dan. The next ones don't have too many explanations, Luke. You're very creative. Well, let's get stuck into them then. You're going to have to wait till your Sunday when the scan man pops up. He's scanned the fields and he's found one for you. Addington, race number nine, Merlin. Now, this is named after a Lord of the Rings character, and that should be what you will do on Sunday. You'll take your ring and you will deposit it to the TAB and you will get it 2.4x if you crack it on Merlin at the group one race day at Addington that they forgot to promote <laughs> another time. Scotty feeling? Scotty's says, feeling ready. Yes. Uh, Scotty's feeling it, and he feels real <laughs> ready. <laughs> and if you need some cash to play with, well, then dreams are free because the Fitzy tells us that in race number two at the group one race day at Addington that they forgot to promote. <laughs> dreams Pat. Is that what he's called? Yep. Yeah. Derek Bills are ringing. Derek bells are ringing, and so is the Fitz's phone when people celebrate the fact that dreams are free, dreams pat, getting you home in race number two. Now, if you need some money before that, of course, all you have to do is have an each-way play on Habana. Each way just to be safe, but you probably don't even need to. Stack it on the nose. Brian Habana's running home, getting you paid, and you've got plenty for Christmas and the Group 1 race day at Addington that they forgot to promote <laughs> again. <laughs> oh, you're very good at that, Luke. Good on you, mate. I've got a bit on. I uh, really, really enjoyed that. I can't Still believe- watching Shazza? Oh. <laughs> I, can't, I, can't, I can't believe you didn't make Habana a best bet winner. You've stacked so much money on there. You've got each way. <laughs> yeah, but gun shy. I haven't been going great. Oh, go Habana. Right. I got gun shy this afternoon as well because my best bet was in race eight. A uh, horse called Flame Bird. Uh, <laughs> last, last start ran into absolute ass the whole way around <laughs> Pukekohe behind Campionessa and Co. It was so, so unlucky. Watch this highlight. It was just ridiculously unlucky. And I think it would have got a lot closer than it ended up being, which was last. But then Ted comes along and we get a blessed bet on Adam I Am and uh, it's his best bet. Adam I Am is in the same race. I just am not prepared to take Ted on. It is not going to happen. So I'm going to go for a Quinella. Race 8, Pukekohe, Flame Bird and Adam I Am. Maybe fix, maybe fix Quinella, boxed. So then if either of them win, you're happy. Um, if they come first or second, obviously you'll be happy. But uh, yeah, I thought Flame Bird was really, really good. Um, but obviously Adam I Am might just be far better. So let's see. Dan, wait. it really interests me that you need to go f- for a piss real bad and you cracked open another beer about five minutes ago. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, when I thought about that, I thought, you know what, there's more important things to do, like look in the camera and say, if you want to come to this fucking Caracamillion, <laughs> Shazza and all your friends, you need to jump onto the Ellerslie website right now, put your 150 bucks into the kitty and buy a ticket, otherwise you're going to miss out. And listen... Shazza, Gary, and all the other fucking boomers out there, we want you there. We want you there to tell us that we're not good at what we do and we're shit at supporting grassroots. We want to hear it all. So come down, get involved, have a good time. Wow. <sighs> live, <laughs> live content, how you've good? Been, you've been thinking about that for a couple of weeks, mate. <laughs> Look, <laughs> since I've been a part of the Boys Get Paid page and I get all the notifications... Oh, that's sort of pent up. Plus, yeah, that's yeah, really yeah, pent yeah. up. We're getting fired up. Oh, yeah. Dickheads left, right, and center. Nah, come on. We absolutely love everybody joining us. As always, 
on a Thursday night. Hopefully no one has been offended because it's all lighthearted and it's all good fun up there. Hopefully we found you all some winners and hopefully you're all looking forward to your Group 1 racing on the weekend. Luke, your best bet, Habana. It's going to come in, mate. I'm sure of it. Yeah. I cannot wait to watch Habana get home. There's one that I've left out in the last oh. race at Pukekohe. It's called Burgundy If. Now, Burgundy If is pretty consistent. It's there or thereabouts. You're getting 6.5 and 2.4. It was a length off of Doddle in the snazzy, tavy, Lorado. Let's give Lorado an excuse. Roddy, Roddy Yard race on Melbourne Cup Day there. So it was flying home and behind them, only a length off the winner. $6.50, Burgundy, if you need to get out. Good work, mate. Absolutely outstanding for everybody being here tonight. Thank you very much for all of your contributions. Enjoy your Group 1 racing on Saturday. Luke and I will be best of BGP tomorrow. It's back. Um, you probably just heard everything that you've heard as well, but it'll remind you over the weekend. So hopefully, uh, yeah, you'll enjoy that. And hopefully everybody has a great weekend. Like Dan said, get your Karaka Millions tickets now because they're going to go quickly. Enjoy your weekend, team. Gamble responsibly. Thanks very much, lads. Good work. Thanks, Adam. Coming, he's gonna get there.